Why, hello everybody, how are you doing today? Hope you've been enjoying your weekend. All you crazy kids doing your youngin' shit, smoking your crack cocaine and cross-dressing. I'm here to bring you yet another survival challenge, part two of the Hellboy survival challenge, because I know how much you guys like your part twos. How will these demon slayers do against the Hellboy universe? As always, I already gave a relatively kind of, sort of, not really detailed explanation of the Hellboy universe in part one. If you don't know shit about Hellboy, go check out that part one, and the first section of that video will tell you about it. If you think you know shit about Hellboy because you've seen the movies, you don't know a fucking thing, go check out that part one. They are different in almost every conceivable way. And if you enjoyed the video, make sure to like, subscribe, comment, share, and join the membership. If you join the membership, you will get videos early, and Wonder Woman will pop out the screen and fucking blow you. And if you're not into Wonder Woman, it's, uh, I don't know, who, who the ladies like? Batman? Batman will come out and blow you. But I'm wasting up your time. Let's get started. Up first on the chopping block, we have Ashley Ash Williams from the Evil Dead series. As a young man, Ash Williams decided to go on a nice little vacation with a bunch of friends from college to a cabin in the woods for some fucking reason because, like, nothing ever good happens in a cabin in the woods. What college student is interested in going to a cabin in the middle of the woods without any form of technology with nothing but, like, fucking boring? Board games and shit or anything to really do they didn't bring guns they weren't intending on hunting nothing so after arriving there they came across a book called the necronomicon it has the ability to bring demons into our world and they read it because they thought that was a good idea lots of great decisions being made in the evil dead franchise for sure so the demons came and started possessing his friends one by one and he had to start killing them off it became this whole thing where he had to fight for a whole night and go from being a little pussy bitch to being like a a badass but through great trial and error he did overcome the demonic threat and then those little motherfuckers did not stop bothering him for the rest of his natural life again and again and again he just kept finding himself in situations where demons want to just fuck up his whole day to the point that young ashley williams became old as fuck ashley williams and was still forced to fight these motherfuckers pretty much at all times and through that sheer attrition ashley actually got really really fucking good at killing demons. Armed with a chainsaw forehand and a double barrel shotgun, he just sort of tries to live his life, man. He just wants to move to a beach, open up a bar, and have sex with beautiful women. But he is forced to constantly be covered in the guts of his loved ones that keep getting fucking possessed by demons. The man just can't get a break. But what exactly can Ashley Williams do? Well, luckily for me, not a lot. He doesn't have a large assortment of weapons and powers. He's just a dude who's pretty damn tough who has a chainsaw for a hand and a double barrel shotgun that's pretty much it for like 85 percent of the story he eventually gets a magical fuck you dagger that allows him to stab people and then instantly destroy them as well as their souls that's pretty cool fucking power he doesn't use it very many times but last we see him he still has it so there's no reason to not give it to him here so how would this old senile decrepit motherfucker do in the hellboy universe well you might be surprised by this due to the simplicity of his abilities and powers but he'll actually do fairly well and most of that is due to personality shit for one he's the only demon hunter i've covered so far as well as the only demon hunter in this video that doesn't actually feel compelled to hunt demons ash is not necessarily what you would call a heroic character he doesn't like fighting demons he's not a fan of it in fact he fucking hates it the only reason why he ends up fighting demons as long as he does is because one he's forced into it by circumstance or two he's literally the only person who can fight against it like if he doesn't do it the world will end it literally took the entire world possibly ending for him to decide to finally get involved and even then he didn't do so very willingly he kind of had to be coaxed into it because he's not going to be constantly going out of his way looking for problems with demons he really won't run into them all that often and when he does he really should only run into people that he can deal with now the hellboy universe is a pain in the ass in a way that a lot of the demons have very specific ways of dealing with them. Not just demons, but demons, werewolves, vampires, fairies, whatever it is, he's got to fucking fight. They all have very specific ways of killing them. Like, if you're a specific demon and the only way to kill you is to stab you in the 
heart. If someone comes up and chops your head off, you're still not going to kill that demon because you haven't met the prerequisites that you would need in order to kill it. That's how a lot of creatures in the Hellboy universe works. Hellboy is able to deal with them because he has an encyclopedic knowledge of demons, fairies, and all other types of supernatural beings, and he just knows how to deal with them all due to his many, many, many decades of experience fighting them. He's the world's greatest paranormal investigator. Ashley Williams is not. In fact, he's kind of a dumbass. Despite that, most creatures that he comes across that he's going to have to fight, he's going to be able to kill them because in his world, the only way to kill demons is to basically cut them up into little pieces and then bury them. That's it. That's the only way to do it. Cutting them up into little pieces doesn't kill them. You have to then bury them afterwards. So if you're a creature that can only be killed by, I don't know, holy water or some shit, and he doesn't have holy water and he doesn't even know he has to use holy water, but then he cuts you up into little pieces and buries you, it doesn't matter that he didn't kill you. You're still fucking dealt with. You're not coming back from that. There really isn't that many things that could. And to be honest with you, Ash is a dumb enough character that he's going to keep killing everything he comes across the same way that he's always killed demons in his own world. Just having no idea that it's not working to actually put them down. But he's just not gonna know. He's just gonna keep doing it. And being like, yep, problem solved. Walking away and the demon just like, bro, you just gonna fucking leave me here? It's actually pretty funny when you think about it. And if he comes across any creatures where that straight up doesn't work for him, like they come together, their body parts piece themselves back together underground and just dig their way back up and come after him. He has the mystical fuck you dagger that can destroy their souls. And that will work on 99% of people within this universe. Now it's not gonna work on everything. It's not gonna work on characters who have their soul removed from their body. It's not gonna work on characters like Koichi the Deathless, who just straight up doesn't have a soul anymore and is literally as deathless as you can be. It's not gonna work on Baba Yaga, whose conceptual being is tied directly to Russia and will exist as long as Russia exists. There's a lot of characters like that it's just straight up not gonna work against. But there really aren't that many characters that are like that. That's like mid-high tier characters. And there's really no reason for Ash to ever run into these characters. Now, if he does, He's fucked. He can't win. He doesn't have the fighting skill to stand up against someone like Koichi, who is the greatest swordsman who ever lived. Ash is a talented demon slayer due to experience, but he's not a trained fighter, and he's never really fought against anybody who was. He's more like a scrappy tough guy than like a trained killer in the art of combat. There's also a shit ton of hacks he has to deal with. While he's physically superior to pretty much any mortal man can be, he can be thrown through brick walls and fight demons that are capable of ripping people apart with their bare hands, and he can fight them on par and sometimes even overpower them relatively easily. His world doesn't have that many hacks. And when it does, he kind of has a lot of plot armor that that hacks doesn't really get used against him. If he does come across a character with like insane levels of hacks that can just instantly destroy his soul or trap him in an infinite illusion or banish him into another universe or one guy just straight up ripped a dude's sight away from him just by saying he's blind and then it just happened. Just like crazy dark magic shit. He's fucked. He can't do anything with that. Ash in this universe will essentially be a scrappy, low-tier survivor type character that can fight demons and monsters and beasts on the ground level, but not much higher. He can't fight against giants or fairies or crazy-ass magical beings or conceptual demons or any of that sort of crazy shit that exists in Hellboy. But again, he won't really go looking for it. Even if the BPRD did approach him and be like, hey, you want to join us? He'll be like, no, I'm not interested. I want to go drink Mai Tais on a beach and fuck this model. That's like his whole thing. So yeah, if he dies, it'll be from just random occurrence, not because he went looking for problems. Next up, we got Blade from Marvel Comics. And it seems like I have to do this every single time I cover a Marvel or DC character. I basically have to go through this long, drawn out explanation of why that character is not as brokenly overpowered as everybody thinks that they are. Everybody <laughs> just scalers really but it's just something i have to do for new people who aren't aware that they've been lied to for instance how fast is blade let me just say right out of the gate marvel doesn't give a shit how fast blade is every single marvel character across the entire marvel universe is as fast as they need to be or as slow as they need to be for any given situation blade usually is not faster than bullets bullets are a threat to him he is not capable of outrunning them or outmaneuvering them sometimes he is shown deflecting bullets with his sword on occasion but they are still shown to be a threat that they can hit him and it's not something he just casually reacts to. However, he's fought against Wolverine. Wolverine has fought against and has been stated to be faster than Thor. Thor was incapable of laying a single hit on him. Thor has several storylines where he's massively faster than light. 
He's fought against Silver Surfer, who can literally control time with his speed. So through the bullshit connect the dots method of power scaling that people like to use, that would make Blade basically faster than time. Is he faster than time? No, because Marvel writers don't care about consistent speed feats. 99.99% .99 of the time, he's like, you know, kind of barely dodging bullet speed. And that's what he's gonna be here. I don't care if you can point out one storyline where he does some incredible over the top bullshit and then ignore the other 99% of his stories. That's not what we do here. If you want to bitch about it in the comments, fine. Go ahead. Also, Blade fights against Dracula. Dracula has destroyed whole cities. He's fought against Doctor Doom. Dracula's a really powerful being, right? That means that Blade's power level, general attack, and defense should all scale to all those characters that Dracula's ever fought against, right? No! Blade's sword is covered in holy glyphs. Any being of evil nature, it has the ability to cut through it. It basically completely negates durability. Yes, Blade's fought against Spider-Man. Spider-Man holds back in all of his fights. So am I gonna take Blade and then just wank him and only use his greatest of all feats that sort of kind of connect to other even greater fit? No, 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 I'm not. If that's the kind of shit that makes your dick rock hard, you're about to get some major blue balls. So for the purposes of this challenge, how powerful is Blade? I just kind of told you. In terms of strength, he's pretty strong. He's definitely superhuman, but it really doesn't matter because his sword attacks are specifically designed to damage beings that are evil and otherwise couldn't be damaged. He has the ability to fight against and completely negate regeneration and has a ton of different equipment that helps him fight specifically against evil beings and the general paranormal shit, vampires, demons, things like that. His speed is usually capable of dodging bullets with some difficulty, not just passively, like there's still a threat. And that's about equivalent to what Hellboy can do, right? He can, like dodge bullets and block bullets and shit like that, but he's not like outpacing the bullet as it's flying in midair right in front of his face. So all in all, how would Blade do in the Hellboy universe? Well, much like Ash, he's gonna have no intention of joining the BPRD. He's just not really much of a team guy. He's more of like a, like a solo act. And yes, I know he's joined teams like the Midnight Suns and things like that, but that always seemed like more of a comic book gimmick of like how cool would it be to take all these dark characters and throw them into the same team rather than something that they were doing because the character would actually do that. Generally speaking, Blade likes to be on his own. It just, it seems uncharacteristic of him to join a team, especially a team that's run by like a government organization and shit like the BPRD is. Now, I see him being friendly with the BPRD and not having any real issues with them. It's not like they're going to have a problem with him going off and doing his own thing. They didn't have a problem with Hellboy doing it, but they'll be friendly and they might join for Forces here and there, but that's really all the interaction they're gonna have. Unlike Ashley Williams, however, Blade is kind of compelled to go out and fight these demons and vampires and evil beings, so he's not really gonna be able to avoid it because he's not gonna try to. In fact, he's actually gonna be compelled to fight the strongest demons and beings that there are, mainly because Blade actually has like a sixth sense where he knows where evil is and can track it. He can actually follow these sort of evil evil demonic auras and black magic and shit like that and that's how he tracks his prey so if he's anywhere in the vicinity of a very powerful paranormal being he's gonna go towards it with the sole purpose of killing it and he may get pretty hard fucked like super hard because there's a lot of stuff in the hellboy universe that he just can't deal with uh he'll be totally cool against vampires and shit because a lot of the same rules that exist within the marvel universe for their vampires also exist in hellboy so that transition will be pretty easy and the stats of the characters actually transitions pretty well as well however marvel doesn't really get as conceptual and broken with its paranormal shit as hellboy does hellboy very much so is like reading an occult horror story there are horror stories in marvel but at the end of the day they still feel like superhero stories dracula doesn't feel like this occult otherworldly monster he feels like a dude with superpowers in the marvel universe if you want to meet a character that can trap you in an infinite illusion or rip your entire soul apart or make you see living nightmares or any of that crazy shit for the most part you kind of have to leave earth and start going into other universes and shit and get into the cosmic realm of their universe but in hellboy it's right there like their monsters can do that characters like the crooked man and nimue and baba yaga and rasputin these are all characters they can just completely fuck up blade's whole
whole situation. And there's absolutely nothing he can do about it. His weapons aren't capable of killing them. Even his regeneration negation abilities aren't going to work on most of them. Like, Rasputin had his entire body destroyed. Like, completely atomized. And then he just still showed up as, like, just a presence. Not a spirit, because Hellboy can actually touch spirits and souls and shit like that. This wasn't a spirit because Hellboy couldn't touch him. It was just his presence. He was just there, but not there. But even if Blade did overcome someone like Rasputin, and Rasputin came back as this sort of presence, Rasputin can still hack the fuck out of him, but he can't fight back in any way. But honestly, I don't really think it's gonna take that long for Blade to get fucked up. Really, he'd get fucked up the moment he ran into Koichi, or anybody even below those guys. Koichi is deathless. Blade's holy runes on his sword aren't gonna do shit against Koichi. He's not affected by any sort of holy power. All of this shit that Blade has, from his armor that repels evil, and his glasses that protect him from being hypnotized and shit, none of that is relevant to Koichi. If you go up against Koichi, you just gotta beat him in a sword fight. And considering he's the greatest swords master who ever lived in the entire universe of Hellboy, and Blade is just like a guy who learned to fight by mimicking what he saw in movies. Yes, canonically, that is how he learned to fight. Now, he does eventually learn more, and he becomes an actually skilled swordsman that could fight against people like Wolverine and shit. He's not peak levels of his universe. He's just very, very good. Koichi is peak level of his universe. He's actually chosen by, like, demon gods to be their avatar on Earth because of his insane level of skill. None of them have ever seen skill like his. And if those two get into a sword fight, as fucking cool as it would be, Koichi's gonna whoop his ass. If he cuts off Blade's head, Blade's dead. If he cuts him in little pieces, Blade's dead. If he removes his organs, he's fucking dead. Blade has regeneration abilities, but he's not fucking Deadpool. It ain't all that. It's just pretty decent. So yes, under normal circumstances, if you put Blade in the Hellboy universe, he can be a demon hunter for a very long time and do perfectly okay. Much like how Ash's characterization, despite being weaker than Blade, would actually help him survive, Blade's characterization would actually get him killed because he's going going to feel compelled to just follow this sense of evil that exists within the world and take it down. And if he goes searching for this shit, he's dead. But if he just minds his own fucking business, just does his job hunting regular fucking vampires and regular monsters that he can deal with, he'll be fine. He's about as good, maybe even a little bit better than like early story Hellboy. So I would say he will eventually die, but likely after decades and decades of pretty decent monster slam. Next up, we have Devil Man from Devil Man Crybaby. Yes, the anime on Netflix, not the manga because, well, I, I haven't read the manga. I don't know anything about it. Besides, I've heard he's considerably more powerful in the manga and he's like killed gods and shit and too powerful to be in this challenge anyway. If you want him in the challenge, we, we gotta use the crybaby version, which I personally liked. I've heard that people who read the manga don't like it because they change the story a lot, which, yes, they do. Like I said, he kills God in the manga apparently. And I can tell you right now, that shit does not happen in the anime. But I thought the anime was pretty fun. I enjoyed it. Oh, Devil Man is a high school student who gets possessed by a demon in this fucked up ritual, but something goes wrong and instead of getting possessed, his personality is still the one in charge. So it's just him being capable of turning into this demon that possessed him named Amon. So it's just like, it's just like a dude who could turn into a demon. It's very similar to Chainsaw Man, actually, in a lot of ways. And he gets all kinds of crazy demon powers. He can regenerate. He's super fucking strong. He can fly around. He basically becomes like a low tier Dragon Ball Z character. Now, is he as powerful as the dreaded versus battle week he says he is? No, I don't even understand where they got all their measurements from. I mean, they say that he's planetary because he fought against Satan and Satan destroyed the moon. But Satan destroying the moon was by shooting a laser that cut the moon in half. So that's not destroying it. Destroying it is blowing it up in little pieces. They just cut it in half. I don't see how cutting in half the moon, which is smaller than Africa in real life, is anywhere near planetary destruction. Even if that were the case, that blast never never actually hit Devil Man, and he can't do that same blast. He only ever gets hit by Satan physically, and all of Satan's hits completely obliterate his limbs. Also, there's no evidence that Satan's physical attacks are equivalent strength to that laser that sliced the moon in half. Devil Man's most powerful attack in the entire series is this punch right here that causes this shockwave. That's it. That's his strongest attack. It's not a planet-busting attack. I don't understand why they have him so fucking high all the way up to planetary. This is very strange. However, I will say this is a hell of a lot stronger than the vast majority of characters in Hellboy. If he's on Earth just 
just fighting demons and shit, he's gonna do just fine because all of his punches are gonna completely obliterate anyone he hits into like fucking soup. He's also really fucking fast, able to break the sound barrier. So unlike a lot of characters in Hellboy who can react to bullets, Devil Man should actually be able to completely outpace them. So he's physically far stronger and at least kind of faster than most characters. And even a lot of that mid top tier that I was talking about before, like Baba Yaga, the Crooked Man, a lot of characters that have just crazy ass hacks abilities. Those hacks abilities aren't gonna do all that good if Devil Man can just blitz and just fucking turn him to paste. Like, what are they gonna do? He won't be able to permanently put down Baba Yaga, but completely annihilating her on a cellular level and then her having to come, like he's dealt with the problem at least temporarily. As long as he's not a dumbass and he actually takes them out and doesn't stop to have a fucking conversation with them and give them the time to hacks fuck him, he should be perfectly fine. The only people that are really gonna give him serious issues are the straight up like top, top tiers. The demon lords, the crazy ass cosmic space gods and shit like that. Those characters, he don't stand a chance against because even his physicals aren't superior to theirs. So do I think Devil Man will survive Hellboy? Um, no. And the reason why I say that is because of one character and only one character. Rasputin wants to bring the chaos demon god characters to Earth. That's his whole thing. Devil Man is not going to allow that to happen. In his story, he literally fought against that exact same thing. So if he finds out about Rasputin, he's gonna want to stop him and he doesn't have a way of permanently putting Rasputin down. Again, he could destroy his body, but then he'll come back as like the whole presence thing. The only way to kill Rasputin is to destroy his soul, which you can't do because it's not in his body. He took it out, split it into a bunch of pieces, and then scattered it all across Earth. Devil Man doesn't actually have any way of finding out where those soul pieces are, so he can't deal with them. So even if he does come across Rasputin and he kills him instantly, on their second, third, fourth, fifth meeting, however long it takes for Rasputin to deal with Devil Man, he'll show up, he'll have Hacks rape the shit out of him, and that's it. He doesn't really have any resistance to any of that shit. You just have a situation where Devil Man is considerably more powerful, but have basically no hacks resistance, and Rasputin just straight up can't fucking die ever, and has just a shit ton of hacks. So, I mean, it's just a matter of time before Devil Man gets put down. Or, you know, have something else horrible happen to him. Use your imagination. Rasputin is basically shown being able to do fucking anything. Next up, we have Samurai Jack from... Uh, Sa Samurai Jack. And you might be thinking this is kind of a weird choice because Samurai Jack's not really a demon hunter necessarily because he only ever really fights one demon, which is a coup. But I feel like if you devote your entire life for the sole purpose of killing one particular demon, you're a demon hunter. I mean, your whole life's purpose is to hunt a single demon. It's okay if it's just one. You're still a demon hunter. You count. I'm counting it. So Samurai Jack, what's his whole deal? Well, long, long, long time ago, before the creation of God, powder and shit. Samurai Jack was like a little boy and his dad was, I guess, a shogun of some kind and he was in control of Japan and then this big ass meteor came down, but oops, not a meteor, big fucking demon shows up, wipes out a whole army, kills his fucking dad. The little child Jack gets sent off somewhere else and he starts getting trained by all the greatest warriors on earth. Everyone he could possibly get trained by his whole life. He trains in preparation to just take out the demon who killed his father, took over his country and was going to take over the whole world. He then goes back to fight Aku, this evil piece of shit. And the moment he's about to give the killing blow, Aku opens up a portal under his feet and sends him far into the future. And in that far future, Aku has successfully taken over the entire planet. And now you have like an old school badass samurai guy who is fighting in a crazy future alien universe, basically on a planet Earth. Now, why didn't Aku open up a portal under his feet that sent him into, I don't know, space or right above a wood chipper? Because that wouldn't make a cool fucking show. And Samurai Jack is for sure a cool show. Sometimes you gotta let stupid shit happen so that awesome shit can happen afterwards. So as always, for the most part, these videos usually put these characters on in order of who is least likely to survive that universe to who is most likely to survive that universe. And it might be confusing people as to why Samurai Jack seems like the most likely to survive. And that's mainly due to, well, a couple of things. One, he actually has a lot of resistances to a lot of the shit that the demons can do. Things like trapping 
stopping him in an infinite illusion. He's been able to get out of shit like that before. At two separate points in the story in Samurai Jack, he had his fucking soul ripped out and he was put into like, I don't know, I guess like inside the person's body or container of some type that trapped his soul and through his own will and determination was able to fight his way out. He can kind of control his soul after it's removed from his body. He's fought ghosts and spirits and all kinds of other things that people shouldn't be able to touch because his sword can cut through any forms of evil and destroy any forms of evil. He doesn't need to know how to kill things. He doesn't have to know that the only way to kill a vampire is to cut its head off. He can just stab it and it'll die because the sword is specifically designed to kill evil. I mean, Aku is literally made out of like shadows and liquid or some shit, like some non-formless thing. And he's capable of killing it because his sword kills evil. He basically can negate whatever sort of resistances or defenses evil has. And as long as the creature he's fighting is evil, durability also does not matter. It doesn't matter how physically strong the flesh of the evil being he's fighting is. If it is evil, his sword will be able to cut through it. This doesn't work on everything as there's one episode where he's fighting a bunch of robots and he can't physically cut through the sword. So he has to call upon his ancestors to give him this badass power up and then he's capable of slicing through them through sheer strength. But it is important to note that it has durability negation, but only towards evil beings. Also towards the end of the story, he actually gets the ability to just use that ancestral power up pretty much whenever he wants. So it basically becomes like his base power level. This happens in the video game that was written by the writer of the show and is canon to the show. He's physically strong enough to lift up boulders that are like eight times his size and then jump hundreds of feet in the air with them strapped to his back. He's fast enough to actually dodge light, like, like actual light as it's traveling through the air towards him. This isn't one of those situations like comic books where a character shoots at you and then you move out of the way and it's like, oh, he dodged a bullet, but you can't really prove it. It's really more so that he's reacting to the person shooting them, but people say that he actually dodged a bullet. Most of the time, that's not the case. No, this is actually light traveling towards him in like mid travel and he moves out of the way going like 70 or 80% whatever the speed of light is. He sees the light moving, he moves out of the way. That's pretty fucking close to light speed. That instantly makes him the fastest fucking thing in all of the Hellboy comics. There really isn't anything light speed in the universe. So with all this cool badass shit, how is Samurai Jack gonna do in Hellboy universe? He is going to do tremendously well. Like I said before, his sword is capable of killing pretty much anything that he comes across. His sword skills are enough that he can pretty much beat anybody. The only real exception being Koichi, who might be more skilled than him. It's really unclear. They're both basically the best swordsmen in their universe. Samurai Jack isn't the best, but he's like one of the best. There's one person who's shown to be superior to him and one that is shown to be equal to him being the Scotsman. But for the most part, he's up there as one of the best. And he's fast enough that it really doesn't matter if Koichi can match him or not. However, it should be noted he won't be able to kill Koichi because Koichi is not evil. Koichi does what he does because he was forced into it by demons. He is not actually an evil being. He's kind of a dick at times, but not pure evil. This doesn't necessarily mean that he won't be able to hurt Koichi, as a lot of people have this wrong opinion that Samurai Jack's sword is not capable of harming innocent people. That's not true. There's actually a couple of instances where we see it hurt innocent people. The only reason why it didn't work against Jack himself is because Jack is pure of heart. It cannot hurt someone who's pure of heart. It can hurt innocent people. So he will be able to use it to kill Koichi. I mean, temporarily, he'll chop him in half and shit. He won't actually die. But there's no guarantee that it will actually put him down for good because Koichi's not evil and the sword is specifically designed to destroy evil. But it doesn't really matter. I don't think Koichi's actually going to be able to beat Samurai Jack. And Samurai Jack's going to be able to beat pretty much everyone he comes across. The Crooked Man's going to die. He's skilled enough to get around all of his magical bullshit and he can slice him up. He'll be killed. He won't be able to permanently put down the Baba Yaga, but again, he's fast enough and skilled enough to fight against her and beat her. She'll come back. He'll beat her again if he has to. Not going to be a big deal. And you can kind of just keep going down the list. Hakei and Nimue, he should be able to deal with most of them. Their dark magic's going to be a problem, but it's not like he hasn't faced shit like that before with Aku. Aku has all kinds of crazy bullshit that he had to learn to circumvent during fights with him. So I don't think it's going to be that much of a problem. Where he would normally hit an issue is Rasputin, but here's where the interesting part is. I think that there's a good chance his sword can negate Rasputin's abilities. So the whole concept is you can't kill Rasputin because Rasputin split his soul up and put it blah, blah, blah. I already explained it. That's like a big problem, right? But Hellboy is capable of eventually destroying Rasputin. Okay, so basically Hellboy's right arm of doom has a similar power to what Samurai Jax has. It doesn't destroy evil, but it can basically kill anything. After Hellboy kills Rasputin, his body's destroyed and he comes back, but he comes back not 
quite right. Like his soul is damaged basically. And every time Rasputin gets killed by Hellboy, he comes back a little less than he was before. And Hellboy is kind of slowly destroying his soul. And this is kind of a confusing concept because his soul's not in his body. It's spread all over the place. But they reiterate a couple of times in the story that this is because of the right arm of doom. Basically doesn't care that his soul's not there. It's still destroying his soul piece by piece every time he kills him. I don't know if Samurai Jack's sword would necessarily have the same effect, but it is stated in the story to be able to kill all forms of evil and put them down permanently. So while I'm not going to say 100% it would have the exact same effect that Hellboy's does, it might. I think that there's definitely a chance. I'm going to let you guys kind of talk about that. Do you think that Jack's sword will actually be able to slowly destroy different pieces of his soul, despite the fact the soul's not actually in him and that the sword's not coming into contact with it? But just because it has the ability to kill evil, that it's essentially bypassing that particular defense. I think there's a chance. I'm not 100% sold on it, but I think there's a chance. Anyway, if he is capable of bypassing this, there really isn't that much on Earth that's going to be able to stop him. Now, there are far more powerful beings in Hell that Hellboy eventually has to deal with because Nimue sends him to Hell and then he willingly chooses to stay there because he believes coming back to Earth would endanger Earth and all that kind of shit. If something similar happens to Samurai Jack, like it's very possible because Aku literally banished him through time. So it's very possible that during his fight with Nimue, if he's clearly about to beat her, she could also banish him to hell the same way Aku did. If he goes down there, he's going to have bigger issues. He's going to be able to kill most things, but there are demon lords and devil gods and shit that are down there that he's going to need considerably more power than he has. I mean, when Hellboy went down there, he only survived because he accepted his place as the king of hell and then grew to like the size of a mountain and got all kinds of crazy fuck you powers. And it was really cool. But Samurai Jack's not going to have that option. He's just going to be him with his sword. And there are things down there that are considerably more powerful than a coup. And considering that we've seen Samurai Jack struggle against things actually considerably weaker than a coup that have higher skill than he does, I think it's very possible he's going to have some serious problems. The only reason why a coup wasn't killed by anybody but Jack is because Jack was the only person who had a sword that was capable of killing him. There's no reason why someone like the Scotsman with the same sword Jack has wouldn't have been able to kill a coup as well. Seeing as their skill level was practically the same. It was really the sword that helped Jack kill him. That sword is going to help him against the demons of hell, but the demons of hell are also considerably more skilled and considerably more powerful than a coup is. So will Jack survive the Hellboy universe? On Earth, yes, I think he will. It's possible he could be killed, but I think his skill resistances and speed are enough that he can overcome any challenge with difficulty. If he goes to hell, which let me be clear, is possible that it won't happen because it's already happened with him in a coup. It's possible that he's learned his lesson from that point. Maybe she could send him to hell, maybe not. It's up in the air. But if she does, he's fucked. He will eventually die in hell for sure. So it's kind of iffy. He might survive, he might not. It really depends on what exactly he comes into contact with. But that's going to be all from me. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to like, subscribe, comment, share, and join the membership. Remember that if you do, you get videos early. And always remember, y'all stay safe out there, you hear?